Welcome to my boudoir. Andreas here, Grecian Thunder, to you newer fans. <laughs> Thanks everybody for watching. Um, it's always a pleasure to be here with you, here in the vinyl community. Record store, record store day. This is Record Rants. Um, so this year I was wrestling with myself on whether or not to participate in Record Store Day. There weren't a whole lot of releases that I wanted, um, so it didn't really make sense to, you know, participate and, and endure the what it, a Record Store Day has become, which is essentially a series of long lines and <clears throat> basically the epitome of why I prefer to go record to record stores every other day, but, however, I'm addicted to what the dick did, and, yeah, I woke up like 6 a.m. last Saturday and was like, fuck, <laughs> so, yeah, I went down to 2nd Avenue Records downtown, um, one of my favorite stores is in Portland that participates. Music Millennium is probably the, the best store in town uh, as far as participation or as far as uh, amount of stuff they get in. Um, but the line at Millennium is always like, you know, half a mile long. And <clears throat> it's it's just nuts, man. I mean, I read an article. I think it was a couple days ago about it. Um, basically, it's like a plea to reduce the amount of releases, um, which would discourage the amount of flippers and eBayers and all the all the people that really don't, in the scheme of things, they don't um, matter as far as record collecting goes. They they don't even they're not important people they're pieces of shit essentially and i'm i know i'm being judgmental there but um yeah they're fucking losers so anyway <laughs> um show you what i picked up i did have one huge disappointment um and i'll explain when i get to it but um dick riding the shit out of off so i I love what Keith Morris and, and company are doing right now. Well, what they're doing, period. Uh, so I picked up the um, Shepherd Fairy collaboration 7-inch. Shepherd Fairy, as you know, is a, was a uh, street artist. Now he's pretty dang famous. Makes a lot of money. But, um, yeah, he made some more money off of me with this 7-inch. Um really good comes with a download code uh voodoo donuts continues to release seven inches on their um voodoo donut recordings label this is um yeah it was nine dollars fucking getting old man nine dollars for a seven inch Are you fucking kidding me anyway <clears throat> i'm addicted uh this is poison idea which is like a local um uh, punk group uh, they've been around for many, many, many years, and they did a, t a song entitled Triple Chocolate Penetration. If you didn't see my last video, um, it's on brown vinyl, which is awesome. Um, this label, it's Voodoo Donuts, is like a Portland thing, and they, uh, they're putting out records of bands doing songs about donuts, essentially. Or donut related. Uh, B side is hypnotic. Uh, Poison Idea also released um, a couple other things. They had one seven inch, and then they had one of those side by sides with Pantera. So yeah, um, I'm collecting these because it's a little. I guess I can call Portland my home, hometown pride. Um, I've been here six years now, so I guess technically that makes it my home. For all intents and purposes. Okay, speed things up here. 
What else did I get? Uh, picked up the Pussy Galore EP, Pussy Gold 5000. Uh, the reissue on uh, Shove, which is, I think, John Spencer's deal. Uh, I think this is their second EP. Fantastic. I, I, I mean, I'm really into whatever John Spencer does for the most part, but uh, Pussy Galore was a really awesome, like, noise rock, I guess noise blues slash rock band in the 80s. Um, and, yeah, had to get it. I've gotten every Pussy Galore record store release thus far. Of course, I picked up the Jackpot Records, uh, Devo, Live at Max's Kansas City in 77. Um, fantastic set here. Um, great songs. Gut Feeling is probably one of my favorite Devo songs. But yeah. Love Devo. Um, I picked up this double LP. Um, this is one of the things I was looking for, for sure, too. It's Pop Yeah Yeah. It's uh, Psychedelic Rock from Singapore and Malaysia, 64 to 70, on Sublime Frequencies. Um, fantastic collection of... This is like... I mean, it... I've only listened to one of the two LPs so far, and most of it's like, I guess, that Brit British Invasion, um, kind of Beatlesque uh, rock and roll, but it's okay by me. Um, it comes with this booklet, which is as per usual with these reissue labels and sublime frequencies now again, etc. Very extensive and... It's awesome. I love these comps, man. I, I I think I think that that part of the world, this part of the world, really did a good job of uh, putting rock and roll through a filter and, and making it uh, something extraordinary. So pick that up, kids. I think it's still readily available. Um, couple non-record stored, well, three non-record stored things. I actually just grabbed these yesterday. Um, this was on sale for nine bucks, so I grabbed the Ghost EP. If you have Ghost, which uh, produced by Dave Grohl, I think and a lot of people have that. This is a local band, um, Satiris. This is their debut, I guess, LP. I haven't listened to this yet. I have heard their music. Um, Dark Fortunes is the name of it. Female fronted metal. Um, there's a picture. Oh, this is them right there. I'm sure you can understand why I like them. <laughs> I'm an old pervert. Uh, okay. Uh. Sleaford Mods, man. Find out about the Sleaford Mods. Andreas Sonic Mainliner showed this uh, a week or two ago. And I went and listened to him, and I was... Whew! It's awesome. This is a duo from UK, I think. Nottingham, if I'm not mistaken. Andreas, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but basically, yeah, this is... Uh, it's like punk for adults. Um, this is what I told Andreas. And it's fantastic. It's like electronic. The guy in the back there, um, he does all the music. And then this fella, um, it's just like slam poetry, essentially, for the working class, I guess. Um, just He just goes after all these one percenters, I guess, is one way of putting it. A lot of it is, is it's English slang, English issues, and things like that, but they can translate worldwide, I think, um, if you really think about it and look into it. Um, amazing collection of songs here. 
my favorite is uh, Fizzy so far. Um, so yeah, and there, I think there's like a like a video on YouTube for it, but check it out. It's like it reminds me of like Suicide or uh, uh, God, what's that guy's name? Um, not the guy in Suicide. I'm thinking of somebody else. Anyway, pick it up. Angry Electronic. <laughs> Punk for adults. Finally, <clears throat> this is what I'm pissed off about. I paid 30 bucks, 32 bucks for this, okay? I love this album. It's a good album. Um, brings back a lot of memories for me when I was like, you know, when did this come out originally? 88? So I was, I was 10, but of course I didn't hear it until a couple years later, you know. Mom didn't much like me listening to the rappins <laughs> i got in trouble for listening to uh what was it i think i got grounded for listening to easy e easy does it around the time that came out but yeah i heard this about 1990 and i thought it was rad i i, I mean musically lyrically an amazing album i wish there was more hip-hop in the, in the mainstream like this now um, rather than what they do um, with the bravado and thinking they're all that rather than trying to educate like Public Enemy does or did um, there are hip hop artists that do don't get me wrong but they're not popular in the mainstream it's all about dancing and getting ass cars and shit, which is fucking stupid. And fuck Kanye West. Why I'm pissed. It had a lenticular cover. I don't know if that'll translate. Yeah, it kind of does. Um, and it was just fucking, like, it had, like, two spots of rubber cement, like, here and here, holding it on. fell off it fell off like just transporting in my backpack from the record store home like one of them was like and basically the, you know it was only holding by one by the time I got home and it was still in the fucking shrink wrap fuck you Warner Brothers or whoever the fuck put this out I mean I guess well I guess it's Def Jam but I don't know who owns Def Jam now probably Warner or Sony Fuck, I mean, for fuck's sake, for 30 bucks, you can't put together a fucking quality fucking product, you know? I mean, I'm more happy with the fucking Sleaford Mods LP, and it's on that... I mean, I know some of you guys like this, but... I mean, look how fucking thin that jacket is. And no download code. <laughs> I'm a cheap motherfucker! But yeah, what, I mean, this is fucking retarded. I mean, pardon the term... But I'm fucking old, so I can use antiquated shit. What? This is great. This album, the fact that it came with the lenticular cover, great. But paste it on, man. Put it on right. And quit making me waste my fucking money. There's a little rant for you. Anyway, one week from today, um, I will be in Austin with my friends. Um, down at Austin Psych Fest, and really looking forward to that, be hanging out. Uh, me and my friend Bobcat will be coming down, and hopefully um, Raul and Eric and David will let us crash on their floor Thursday night. We're camping all weekend, but um, need a place to stay Thursday, so if anyone going has a, has a floor we can stay on, that would be great. Um, yeah, that's about all I got to say uh, about Record Store Day. And I'm so looking forward to Austin, man. It's going to be tacos and booze and all sorts of fun. Like uh, music, of course. The experience of the Austin Psych Fest and, and being with uh, good friends and meeting new friends that I've met on here. So, see you down there. And maybe we'll make a vidya. Kiss, kiss. <laughs>